um, decentralized security. So hi everyone. Um, my name is Quentin Adam, and I'm uh, leading a company called Clever Cloud. And uh, here is uh, Geoffrey Coupri. Hello. Hello. Um, so we both work at the company called Clever Cloud. Yeah, I know. I love LMG. Uh, we know Clever Cloud in the room. We use Clever Cloud in the room. We want to use Clever Cloud in the room. Ah, that's right. Uh, <laughs> basically, it's a company where you're just taking your code, you git push, and we deploy, so it's easy. Like, a monkey can write a, a deploy script, but more, it's writing all the automated application sustainability after that. So, there is monitoring, automatically updates uh, the virtual machine, scale out, scale down, uh, like everything. Like, you just push code and we manage that it works. So we have our own European cloud, and we also give these tools on premise, so on real bar metal stuff. So we don't sell your data to Trump, everything. So <coughs> let's talk about um, why decentralized stuff. Uh, if you're using microservices, for example, you will have uh, part of your API in several points of your uh, infrastructure. And each part of the API will need uh, authentication, authorization, and all this kind of stuff. Or for your replication, or for example, if you need resiliency on your system, maybe uh, the problem will be to have resiliency on the authentication and stuff. Or maybe because you cooperate with other parts. Like, for example, if you, if you create a custom service with another company or part of your company, but you, you, you need to decentralize the way that people authenticate because it's not the same people authenticating this. So we need to decentralize the authorization. So the access to your API has to be decentralized the, the way we protect the API. Okay, so um, there's been in the past few years a lot of confusion between authentication and authorization, mainly because OAuth tended to move authentication to an authorization system, like go to Google and then you authentify on another system. Uh, authentication identifies one principle, one person or one system. Authorization just says what you need to do. You don't need authentication in microservices because some microservices don't even need to know what is this user or what is this process. They just need to know what can they do. And this is authorization. And how can they do that? Either they will have a centralized system that they ask, or we can transport the authorization with the request. And that's where we're going with this talk. Uh, so basically, we, can, we have a look on all the solutions on the market. The first was Kerberos. Who know Kerberos in the room? We use it. Yeah. Nobody wants to use it like ready because it's complicated. Uh, basically, one of the problems with Kerberos, it's, it's managing the authorization, but it's also managing the transport. So Kerberos has to use his own uh, protocol to work. So it's not embeddable, for example, in a browser. You, you, you have to give access to a Kerberos server. It's, it's complicated. It's based on tickets, so you have to renew stuff. And uh, it has been done for network who actually works. So you, it's, it's, it's quite complicated to say uh, the network will be flaky because you will lose access to Kerberos every time. So it's, it's not a protocol made for mobile or Wi-Fi or anything like that. Uh, we also look at Radius. Uh, Radius is more about the identity when Kerberos is about the authorization. It's also very centralized, and the, it's also have its own transport. So it's 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 the same kind of situation. You know, it's 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 all protocol made for your network internally. This kind of stuff. It's not made for the internet. You know. Um, Maybe you want to talk about that, no? Yeah. So SAML has still, is still used a lot because it's been based of stuff like SOAP, if people uh, ever did the SOAP APIs. Uh, it was a way to transport a notification context and authorization through basically a lot of XML. And it works. It, it was meant for HTTP. But there was still a lot of complexity because you bring it 
a lot of components. You, it's designed for to talk to LDAP, that kind of stuff. Between Kerberos, Radius, Summer, it's like different realms of authentication that appeared and had their own way of doing things. And people then moved on to OAuth, which was another realm. Um, uh, no, it's, it's okay, it's okay. And we moved to simpler systems, basically. Because for web, for mobile, for microservices, we need things that can be deployed quickly and that can be, uh, that can be understood. So that's why for a long time, many people were based only on the cookie. Uh, the way is, a lot of people think the cookie is a way to authenticate people, but it's not true. Uh, sometimes people just put information in the cookie, like many framework or website years ago were just like, okay, if, if this guy is an admin, I just say admin true in the cookie and that's okay, you know, and it's secure. Except it's not. I know a lot of people say no, but lots of internet website was working this way like 10 years ago. So basically it happens that one day we decide that the best way to interact with a cookie was just like putting a key and have a session store elsewhere, which, which was the way people interact. But the point is it centralized the way we manage a session and a lot of people were lost in the manipulation of cookie, which is a shame because cookies have a lot of good tooling and options inside the web browser, and today there is still innovation on that, which is really interesting. Um, this presentation is not about that, so uh, I will not go further into details, but one of our colleague called Hubert Sablonier, which is a really nice guy, I've done a very good talk about cookie, which is a back to the basics cookie uh, session. You can find it on French or in English uh, on the internet. So doing that, people move to OOT because basically the people of the Twitter or this kind of company, when they go inside the authentication strategy, don't think, okay, we need to use Radius, Rada, and all this kind of stuff. They, they were web developers. They don't, they don't have this background, so they create OAuth. OAuth is a good way to delegate authentication, and some old people use it as authorization. There is several problems with OAuth. First, the implementation is non-consistent. OAuth 1 have a specification, OAuth 2 never have a specification, and even OAuth 1 was flaky in the implementation, OAuth 2 is just a nightmare. Uh, it's still very centralized because you build token, and inside this token, uh, rely everything, so if you need to know what the right about this token, you still need to require an external services or internal services to know what's inside the token and what the rights you need uh, to have. And um, one of the problem with OAuth is there is a lot of problem of stealing the token. Because the, 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 the token itself is very poorly documented, so it's, it's very easy to, to know, like, we use a bit of a token, every request is made with its token, so just listen for the request, steal the token, and, and you, 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 you can, you, you can uh, take the authentication. So many good solutions appeared, and one in uh, JWT. Um, JWT stands for JSON. One of the very interesting part about JWT is it's the first time where we think that the format, the the way we build the authorization, is disconnected from the transport. A JWT token can be taken and used like in every protocol because it's meant to be serialized and you take the token and you take it wherever you want. Um, so what's great is it can convoy identity because you can add information inside your token. And, um, and uh, one of the point is basically you, you have a JWT because a public key sign of uh, the, the, there is a server who will sign your JWT, and then you have the public key, so you can, you can check it's really this server who have signed. So you don't need to share the secret, you don't need to contact the server to say, okay, this JWT is valid. Okay? The downside of JWT is, first, it's EV token. Like, JWT token are very, very, very big. 
and uh, and it's one of the problems that it's they don't fit in cookie for example very easily or if you have a lot of requests it's you 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 just tracking a heavy stuff just to to say oh i'm quentin you know it's like it's it's complicated um, the complexity and the modularity of JWT are leading to security issue because a lot of pro people don't understand the 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 background of um, encryption basically on the JWT and made very big issue and one of the problem is the data stainless of the thing that um, you cannot you, you cannot uh, uh, be sure that the data inside the JWT is right because it, it can be six months old. Yeah, you take JWT, put it, and that's way. Um, another thing is there is no delegation, no attenuation inside JWT, uh, which leads to the question: What is delegation and attenuation? Okay, so um, imagine you have your token saying, okay, you user X to the system, and you want to delegate part of uh, your ability in the system to someone else. Like maybe you have a Dropbox account, and you want to s send to someone the ability to send file to one specific folder, not read, not touch any other folder, not create folder, just send files there. And maybe in that, between that date and that date. This is, you delegate authority, to someone else to do things uh, to imp impersonate you, and you attenuate the rights. You say, okay, I do not give all my rights. I give a subset of what's possible. And this is something that's very, very useful when you want to have distributed authentication. Because, uh, sorry, distributed authorization. Because you don't want every, every microservice to be able to do anything in the system. Each have their own uh, their own work to do, their own area. They don't need to have all of the rights. And if you have one microservice that gets tokens that have too many, too many rights, and this microservice is badly written, very, uh, very general tokens can be stolen from this microservice and used elsewhere. So you want to reduce the rights as much as possible. It can be used in many situations. First, it gives the token to another one, so it can be the same parameter of rights or less uh, big parameter. It can be a token limited in the time, or it can be something used when you store the token in a place where you, 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 you know it's safe, and you craft a new token in each request to, to know that the token you launch for each request has very limited rights, very limited lifetime, so you know if someone in one way is able to steal the, the, the token in the request, it will not be able to do something interesting with, okay? So that's the point. It's lead us to another stuff, which is the macarons. Macarons have been invented by Google. They don't use it, but they invented it. So it's another authorization token. Um, it's also transport and agnostic. Um, inside caveat, caveat is kind of field. It's it's mix of information you share with the token and information uh, used to give you rights. It's it's quite indefinite inside the macaron proposal. Um, you can convoy your identity within that. Uh, one thing's very interesting with macarons. It's it's decentralized. So you sign a macaron. Someone can use the macaron to craft another macaron. There is attenuation, there is delegation inside it, and try it in another service. But there is several issues with macaron. First. So macaron is based on a shared secret. Uh, any system that needs to validate a macaron must know the, the secret. And so you cannot have that thing moving around in your system. And Anytime you change the secret, you invalidate all the macarons, and it's it's very useful if you have basically one server delivering macarons and validating them. Uh, when you get more than a few nodes, it can quickly be hard to to handle. And um, as Quentin said, like caveats are not well normalized, so uh, there have been specification, but not everybody follows the same specification. So it's it's a bit hard to handle. 
Um, and macarons are heavy. Like, like all the, the stuff we show, it's, it's very variable. So you have a lot of, of bite to carry around with your request. So it's the problem with macarons uh, there. So when we decide at Clever Cloud, we need to change the way we authenticate stuff. Uh, we were not satisfied. Basically, what we say is we don't want to have shared secrets. We don't want to have shared secret because it can be a security issue. You know, if the secret is leaking, okay, we're fucked. And like we have something like 400 something microservice working together. It's a pretty complex platform. We don't want to share the secret with everyone. And um, and more if you you begin to have stuff like trusted people, but not in your core team. Like for example, you build a product with a company, and you, your partner in the stuff, you need to authenticate uh, API request call, but you don't want to give them the shared secret, you know? So one of the point was no shared secret. The other point was delegation and attenuation is quite fun. We want it. We want it because it can be very useful for many reasons. Hey, we want this feature, it's interesting. And uh, we want the request token will be small. We don't want it to be too heavy. So that was absolutely no solution in the market. That's why we're happy to introduce you the Biscuit. Biscuit is a new authorization token and uh, conceived by Jofra. So if you can talk about that. So we, we meant the, the biscuit to be able to be used in decentralized system and handle at the same time delegation and that something that we can transport easily by re reusing existing systems. And we also want to have like a, a right management system that's very, very flexible, more than anything we've seen before. And uh, there were some interesting things to solve, like I said uh, there are fancy crypto in there, you'll see just later, it's quite fun. And we have something that could be used to handle decentralized authentication and authorization in microservices. Okay, so <clears throat> uh, first we built the base script on top of Hatchpack. Uh, Hatchpack is the new format you have in HTTP2 for all the headers. It has been done for compression. Because one of the problems with tokens is the compression. So we use Hatchpack, which have an implementation in every language now, to be able to compress the data uh, using specific static table uh, with a format we share to be able to load more the table uh, in the in the in the Biscuit uh, client. And on the edge pack, you basically have a key value model to store the data inside your, your, your biscuit. So in this, we pre-built some headers, which is the identity, the issuer, the reissuer when you subclass something, uh, the expiration of a token, the right of a token, like unlike macaroons where you, you basically are swimming around uh, with no comprehension of what's inside the macaron. Um, with the biscuit, you already have predefined headers with specific usage. Exactly like HTTP, where you have predefined headers with specific usage. Then we build a stuff called capabilities. Um, inside each biscuit, you can define the way you have the right. So basically, uh, we say that if you're looking at this, this is um, the kind of specs. You can say with a biscuit for this namespace, I add rights and I remove rights. So if you are, I, I built some example. For example, uh, for the namespace Clever Cloud, I add rights on all with all the feature. But I remove all the rights for all things what are tagged with prod at the, big, at the end or 
the only tag will be prod. So I will removing like I give you all the rights, but everything which is less tag at prod, I give you off all the rod, all the rights. But for everything, I give you the right to read the log and drain the log, which which re-add some rights we removed before. So you will have the, the rights to read and drain the log even on production stuff. And if later we, we, we change stuff uh, in, in, a, in, a, in a further subclass biscuit, you can have something like it. Each thing which is uh, tag WordPress, I will suppress the, ri the right to log drain. So basically, what's, what's doing the biscuit is building a mattress of rights, and everything it falls at the beginning, and you can flag on and flag off, and we're using regex everywhere to be able to manage all the complexity of a complex right in a system. To be able to do that, we use pairing-based cryptography. Okay, so let's start one hour of mass and crypto. Um, no, uh, seriously, if people want to check the mass and take a look at what it is, uh, take a screenshot and we can talk later or by mail or whatever, because I know it can be a lot. Uh, Pairing-based crypto is, a pairing is a function from two groups to another group, which allows some magical stuff like uh, this equation, uh, we can, have, can multiply points in one group and another, and you can move the scalars around, like the numbers. And it allows uh, public key systems, and it allows uh, systems like, look, so I said public key system, so you choose a scalar, you choose a number k, and you multiply one of your points with k, you get your public key, so in my group G2. And I can apply my pairing to that, Oh, sorry, I, yeah, I can apply my pairing to that and generate a signature that can be verified if anyone knows the pairing you use, the groups, the message, and the public key. So, uh, this is already useful, but the funny thing we can do with that kind of crypto if you can aggregate signatures. So, if we have uh, one message signed by one public key and we have another message signed by another public key, I can just add the two signatures. And if I know both messages, if I know both public keys, and I know the, the resulting signature, I can validate that everything is correct. And the important point is I cannot go from there to any of the two previous signatures, which allows us to build our system. Uh, let's assume we have one block of caveats and rights and uh, headers and stuff, we sign that with the issuer public key. From there, we can easily derive a new token with a new public key. So we add caveats. We sign this new block, the block two, with a new, another public key. And the, the resulting token will be the first block, the second block, and the addition of the first signature and the second one. And so we derived a new token, attenuated, with new, new rights management. And that can be verified by anyone who will know the public key one and the public key two, the blocks and the signature. So uh, for technical details, it uses a curve called BLS 12381. Uh, there are a few libraries you can use to mess around with that kind of thing. It's kind of new cryptography, like it appeared around 2005, something like that. So it's not very proven yet. We want to get that audited, but it's a very exciting part of cryptography and can do a lot of interesting stuff. So we'll get more into that and make it fast, make it safe. Um, with this kind of stuff, we can use the old token as uh, SSO. So it, you can actually take the token, add your own rights inside it, and give back to the user. So a token can carry the rights of multiple services, even if they don't know each other, which is pretty cool, if you think at it. Um, 
the other thing is we built in a revocation mechanism. So basically, it will be more easy to, to do. It, you can't build revocation mechanism for JWT on macarons, but you have to do it yourself. There, it's on, on the specification itself. Um, current performances are quite good because we can validate three caveats in 1.5 milliseconds. And the public key and the signature is pretty short. So it will be able to store small biscuits inside a cookie. So what is the status of biscuit? Uh, the RFC is currently in uh, review uh, inside Clever Cloud, and we will public uh, it on the blog before the end of the month. It's, it's nearly ready. Uh, we have a C++ REST implementation of the stuff, which is messing around. So it will be available at WASM at some point, and for internal purpose, we will use it on the GVM. So we will working on that. Uh, we need comments, and uh, we need audit of the stuff. Uh, it will be on, on our blog and on GitHub. So we, we need people who actually use it and uh, find it cool. Thank you very much for listening. Um, we have good sticker. <laughs> and you can take some sticker there. We, we made you a coupon to try Clever Cloud. Thank you very much. Should you want to ask one question, the golden question, you can ask. We have a question? No? Do not, yeah. One question. Alain, uh, you can start installing yourself uh, during, during this time, please. Hello, Th thank you. Uh, what is the, 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 the right syntax is uh, m more complicated. What you didn't use uh, some uh, simple syntax as uh, JSON or YAML description? Because it's too easy. It's Be way too easy. It, it, it give you, because if we use this kind of syntax based on JSON, yeah. it gives you like way fat token. You cannot embed inside small uh, request. Any other questions? Okay. So the size of your token keeps, uh, you can keep uh, track of where it went, right? But does it keep growing, the, to the token? Is that a problem or is that a concern? No. So the question was, the token keep growing as we add caveats. Uh, in practice, in things like with macarons, they, there are not that many levels that people use. Like, they get a token and they get a new, new thing for another service or maybe a third party caveat, but after like four or five levels, not much.